In this video tutorial, we're going to take a step back from writing actual JavaScript code, and we're going to do just a little bit of theory. Don't worry, we're not going to get into some micro nerd details that's going to put everybody to sleep here, but I want to cover some basic things that I think will help you as you explore further into JavaScript. So I have a bunch of points I want to cover. Again, we're not going to take too long here, just enough to get us forward. So let's, let's just jump into it and yeah, the pain will be over soon. So number one, what is a programming language? That's the question. And of course, some of you may be thinking to yourself, well, this is pretty obvious. We know what a programming language is. Hmm, maybe, but let's just jump into it. So number one, it is a written language. It uses normal Western characters like you see in English or French, but it has special keywords that have a special meaning in the language. So for example, in our last video, we learned about the alert function. You know, remember those pop-up alert boxes? That's just one example of a keyword built into JavaScript that has a special meaning and gives us a special functionality. In fact, the word function is a keyword in JavaScript as well. There are several of them. And as we explore JavaScript, we're going to look more closely at some of these special keywords. In a nutshell, a programming language provides a way to send commands, or in other words, instructions to a computer. A programming language is actually created by programmers. This is an important distinction that uh, JavaScript, for instance, is one it's just one example of a programming language that was written, created by programmers. And there's a reason I mentioned that, and that's in the next point. There are many different programming languages because each one has its own speciality. So that's a question that I'm sure some of you are beginners to programming. You're asking yourself, why do you have so many programming languages? Why do you have JavaScript? Why do you have uh, C Sharp? Why do you have uh, Cold Fusion, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? And the reason is because each language has its own thing that it does really well. JavaScript, for example, was designed to allow web designers to control web browsers. Here's an important point, the key of this particular video. So put on your thinking caps and, uh, and pay attention to at least this part here, if anything. The written language, in this case JavaScript, is actually processed or read by the JavaScript engine, or in other words, the JavaScript interpreter. So you can see JavaScript as being both a human readable written language, as well as being an engine software or software that processes the language and executes the code. So the JavaScript engine, a piece of software, is actually installed into all modern web browsers. So I hope uh, that little part uh, sinks in. You can think of the JavaScript engine as being a separate program that's installed inside a web browser that lives in the web browser. And the JavaScript language is the written language that uh, has special commands and keywords that allows us to tell the engine how to manipulate the uh, web browser. One last point, quick point, JavaScript and Java are not the same programming language. And they, in fact, serve totally different purposes. I mention that because a lot of people think that they're the same thing. So JavaScript and Java are not the same language. JavaScript is the programming language for the web browser. And Java is a, uh, what they call an enterprise level language used basically for creating database-driven websites. This is all server stuff. So anyway, if you don't know about database-driven websites, go to killerphp.com. You'll learn all about it there. And the final point I want to cover, uh, this is a, an interesting one. Why aren't CSS and HTML programming languages? In a nutshell, because you cannot make decisions and change things on the fly with CSS or HTML. 
JavaScript allows you to add controllable behavior to a web page. That's the key point. It allows you to add controllable behavior to a web page. So for instance, you could use JavaScript to check what time of day it is and to change the web browser's background color, the web page background color on the fly. Or you could have JavaScript time how much time a person's been on the page and then have something appear. These are things you cannot do with CSS and HTML. So the subtle difference between a markup language or a written language like CSS or HTML, they're not programming languages simply because they do not provide the ability to add behavior to a web page. So that's it for the uh, nerd theory in this video. I promised it would be short and or about six minutes, it's pretty short. In the next video, we're going to jump back into some more uh, JavaScript code. Just keep in mind what we covered here as we're working along, and you're going to see how understanding the fact that you have an engine running back there will make learning JavaScript just a little bit easier.